I love this next clip. This clip is CNN. Um, they are worried about where America would be without them, particularly when it comes to, like, COVID-19 stuff. So let's take a look, and then I'll respond. In the Reliable Sources newsletter, here's a here's a big, overly broad question for you, okay? Is the media at this point out of touch with the public about COVID? I, I think it's hard to argue that, uh, you know, the media is a, a large uh, group of people, but a lot of the media does seem, when I look at it and, and then travel the country, to be very out of touch with people. I mean, if you travel the country, people are not really living in the same uh, bubble that it seems that... Uh, most of the media is messaging toward. And, right. and so, yeah, and, and so I, I, I think this is an issue because if people are tuning out uh, what's going on in cable news, if we're not messaging toward uh, the general population, um, you know, they're, they're just, you know, ignoring everything and, and living their lives. Uh, and, and we're not really getting the information that they need to them. <laughs> That's a good one, bro. I remember years ago, there was a study that came out which found that people who watch no news are actually more educated on the news than people who watch Fox News. And I haven't seen an update to that study, but I would reckon if they redid it, they would find the same thing for CNN and MSNBC now. Because the, the amount of misinformation that they put out there is legendary. I mean, look, all of Russiagate, they spent years hyperventilating over this idea that Donald Trump was Vladimir Putin's puppet as Donald Trump was escalating with Vladimir Putin and arming Ukrainian neo-Nazi groups to be at his border and, you know, uh, rejecting the Putin's pipeline and things of that nature. And they just were all in on this utter conspiracy theory that the Kremlin infiltrated the government or whatever. So if you watch no news, you'd be more educated than if you watch the news at that point in time. Now, that's just one example, but we can go on and on. This idea... That, oh my God, they'd be lost without us, particularly when it comes to COVID. What are you talking about? It's, it's not just you. It's also like every step of the way, the CDC, for example, the FDA, everybody was wrong about so much stuff. I mean, there was a time when Fauci was like, don't wear masks, masks don't work. What? There was a time when not just Fauci, but all mainstream media would call the idea conspiracy theory that, hey, maybe this originated in a lab in Wuhan. They left that out of the room. They would fact check that and they would... Act like if you're arguing the other side of that, you should probably be banned from social media because that's dangerous misinformation. No, you're the one spreading misinformation. They have this false certitude. Again, on COVID stuff, you, oh, you got to rely on us because COVID stuff. Guys, listen. W remember the whole Joe Rogan fiasco where he was taking ivermectin and they said it was the veterinary version and it was horse medicine? Look, that you got to be honest. That's just dishonest, man. That's what that is. Now, it would have been fair to say, hey, he's taking ivermectin. He's also taking monoclonal antibodies and a bunch of other things. And the, the studies on ivermectin are at the very least incredibly mixed. So it maybe is not a great thing to take that or to put that on the list of things that you should take when you have COVID, but he is taking the human version of it and it, there is mixed evidence and there are doctors that are prescribing this thing. They couldn't even hit that bare minimum level of ob objectivity. They couldn't do it. So this idea that, well, they need us because they have to rely on us for stuff. You guys mislead people like nobody's business. Imagine how much effect it had when every when C every CNN show, every MSNBC show, and every um, nightly news show immediately flipped and realized, hey, only Biden can beat Bernie at this point. And so when Mayor Pete and Amy Klobuchar dropped out and endorsed Biden and they all said, that's it, Biden's the guy. Look at how uniform they were across the board and how much that propaganda influenced people. So Biden ended up winning. Look at Afghanistan. Look at the one of the few good things that Biden did when he pulled all the troops out of Afghanistan. Now, granted, he's currently starving the country through sanctions. So this is damning with faint praise. But when he ended the actual war... They acted like Joe Biden was Charles Manson, and it's the worst thing he ever did. So they misled people into thinking the real chaos is because we're leaving, as if when we were there, there wasn't chaos. They didn't educate people on our deals with warlords with child sex slaves. They didn't educate people on that. They didn't educate people on the Afghanistan papers, which showed the corruption and the incompetence at the highest levels when it came to that war. And then again, to bring up the next example... Oh, people need to watch us. What, what are they going to do without us? When people watch you, you're not talking anywhere near enough about the 
uh, the starvation of Afghanistan, the sanctions on Afghanistan by the West, we froze the, the country's entire assets because the Taliban took over. And as a result of that, millions of people are starving. Malnutrition is through the roof. People are going to die, and they're already dying because they don't have enough food. All you have to do is lift the sanctions. Why aren't there segments on CNN every single day saying, lift the sanctions, this is murderous? Why aren't there segments about Yemen every day saying, we're aiding a genocide in Yemen too? So people don't... The idea that they need to turn to you because you're giving them the information and they'd be lost without you, that's absurd. People are better off if they never watch you. They're so much better watching new media. There's six, seven shows I can name that people would be better off watching those shows in new media and independent media than watching you guys. Now, he did say at one point, to be fair, and this is correct, the media is out of touch with people. You're damn right they're out of touch with people. Then he said, well, most people aren't in the media bubble, saying it would be a good thing if they were in the mainstream media bubble. No, that's one of the biggest problems in this country, is that you guys do a terrible job. Look, don't... Don't take my word for it. There's a great book came out years ago, and the model still more or less holds up in today's day and age with minor tweaks. But uh, Manufacturing Consent. You got to read Manufacturing Consent. This is on the nature of the media and how they control the debate. They give you the illusion that there's a robust debate going on, but really the debate is very narrow in terms of the parameters of it. And as a result, you never get true outsider opinions, honest opinions, opinions that really question the fundamental status quo and the framework of the system we've set up. And so that leads people with a crisis of imagination where they don't realize just how screwed they are, how bad the status quo is, how bad the establishment is. Um, and you really perpetuate a lot of the problems that exist in the country by only ingesting this sort of dim, uh, unserious media. So, and it's on every issue, man. It's on every issue. It's tough to sort through all the bullshit out there, but well, I think what people intuitively know is most of this stuff is total bullshit. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.